Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week received his doctor in dental surgery degree in 2001 from the University of Panama School of Dentistry, and he later received his doctor of dental medicine degree from Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 2014. His passion in implants and comprehensive treatment led him to a three-year advanced prosthodontics residency at the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Dentistry. Currently practicing from Bonita Springs, Florida, please welcome Dr. Ronald Benz, DDS, DMD. How's it going, Dr. Benz? How you doing? Very good. Very happy to be here with you and everybody who is listening to this show. You know so much about me. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Like, how do you know that? Oh, man, we got we got guys doing all the research, and you're a really big dude on um, on Instagram, man. And so I, I think my boys found you guys uh, over there, and that's just, God, you got like 30-some-odd thousand followers and that's just that's just so neat man i love to see dentists that are just crushing it in the social media world so congratulations on that and uh instagram been good to you i take thank you thank you so much <laughs> yes we were started you know we started doing this uh you know instagram thing to trying to show or share okay. what we do in dentistry um pretty advanced stuff that we learn at residency and then um some we, we can just share it and transfer that information into uh, a lot of dentists and especially dental students that are so eager to learn. Oh, absolutely. I see it. It's so neat. I wish I could just go to the masses and, uh, you know, advertiser market just to, uh, you know, the public for my services. But I have to just I my my uh, my group is dentists. So it's kind of hard to get those guys only to look at my stuff. But uh, it's <laughs> It's neat how you're doing it, though, man. That's just really cool. But, um, hey. Thank you. I always start off talking a little bit about sports. Uh, you in any of that college, or not college, you in any of that soccer going on, that World Cup, the Women's World Cup? Well, interesting thing that I love soccer, just like pretty much every Latin American, you know, um, people. And now United States is getting big, big, you know, in the in the soccer, yeah. both women and men. Um but as an interesting thing, I just went for a, um, a training in France uh, a week ago, and then I was um, in Annecy, Annecy, is one city, like four hours from uh, Paris. Okay. And then at that time when I booked my flight and everything, I didn't know there was a World Cup, oh, a woman World Cup in Paris. Otherwise, I could have like you know, have more time to like go there. But yes, I'm very, very passionate about soccer. And right now there's a gold cup, you know, yeah. going on right now Absolutely. where Panama is actually, you know, playing and then they're doing very good right now. So um, I'm happy for that. But That's yeah, awesome. I love that. Yeah. Love the men's, soccer. the men's team's not even in that one, but uh, I got, we got the women's, <laughs> <laughs> we got the, um, I mean, for the American men's team's not in it, but Hey, they, they were crappy, so they shouldn't be in it. <laughs> but uh Anyways, the women, uh, they're playing France right now, who's the host, and uh, they're saying that the winner of this game is kind of like, this is kind of like the, the championship up. game oh, in a way, but I think London's got, uh, England's got a really good team too, but um, now the Americans are up one nothing right now so far, it just started off, and uh, I think that uh, Rapoli girl, or whatever her name is, um, yeah, Megan something or feeling it. Yeah, something like I that. I love I love that. And then if you start watching that game, you'll be like impressed. Yeah. How they perform, how they do that. But you know, all that is because of discipline. You know, yes. training. Everything in life is about that. Discipline, training, you know, you, you can do better just by training and be focused on what you want. Oh yeah. It's uh it's it's took a while to catch on here in America, you know, but it's something um right. I guess even now with uh 
that Megan Rapinoe, she's causing a bunch of stir uh, with the people, but not standing for the national anthem, I guess, or not participating. And then that's just kind of, that irks me a little bit, but it's something that, um, it's her right, I guess. And, uh, she, uh, also is, it's a big thing with the pay, I guess, between the men and the women. And I think that's kind of, um, it's not, that's not right. Had the men paid so much more. I mean, Kind of, you know, so many millions. Yeah, it should be kind of equals, I would think. But um, hopefully, they'll be able to get that and stuff. But uh, I think the pay. It's a slow process for sure. Yeah, it's a slow process, but it it will get there for sure. Absolutely. So that's kind of neat. Then we got the lake or the basketball. I mean, I don't know about you guys out there in Florida with your teams, but uh, the Lakers, man, we oh. we, got, <laughs> we we traded a whole team uh, is gone. Now we all we got right. is like three players, man. It's like. You know, uh, we got the big Anthony Davis trade, and then we still got LeBron and then Kyle Kuzma, but we have a full max available. So they're hoping Gosh. to get that Kawhi, uh, Kawhi Leonard or whatever. He's the MVP of the Toronto Raptors, but that would be kind of a bummer for old Canada to have the world championship and then have their star player leave. And especially the Lakers, Lakers are kind of like that worst, hated, most hated team in basketball anyways. And especially if they, they put together a team like this real quick and they go out and win it. I mean, they're already favored them right. in, in the Vegas. It's kind of crazy how they can do that when they didn't even make the playoffs last year. But um, it's been a long time for the Lakers, six, seven years. We haven't been in the playoffs or anything. And it's it's been a I've been a long line, you know, all my life Laker fan and we were just so used to all the years, you know, with the Celtics and with the Knicks and all the Detroit and all these big, you know, matchups and right. you know, playing for the playing for the trophy almost every year. Yeah, but not lately. Those are big teams. Lakers, uh Celtics, I mean, we're talking about I'm not I'm not that young, okay? So, I grew <laughs> up when I was like in the 80s, they were Celtics and um, how you call that the, the Lakers and yep. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. You know, yep. I was I was growing with all those people. Yes. You know, so I love the NBA and I was in Panama at that time. So we always have our preferred team no for time. sure. So we're big fans of uh, Lakers. And now living in Bonita Spring, we don't we don't even belong to the Miami <laughs> where we had the Miami Heat, and uh, we we're not belong to or the Orlando where they had the Magics. I mean, we're <laughs> like in the middle of. <laughs> a little bit like distant from those um, big, you know, games and stadiums. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit hard for me to look, like follow up. I, normally, I, what I do is like just wait for the uh, playoff and then the finals. That's no what kidding. I like to do. Just wait for that. Oh, absolutely. I'm kind of the same way. It's like it, in, unless they're winning and stuff, it's hard for me to watch, you know, right. in the season. But when come playoffs, that's when I really get in. And the same thing with baseball. It's like that's just kind of so boring lately. You know, it's all – one nothing, two nothing, and a you know four hour game, and so it's kind of only when it gets down to the World Series, kind of into baseball. But um, yeah, that's the way a lot of people. I think the old love of football for me is that's my sport, and I just love the way college plays it. You know, they don't have contracts right. or anything; they're playing it for the love and and just really getting after it. Where the pros are kind of pampered, you know, multimillionaires, but uh, it like it'd be nice for them to come out every play and play with their full strength. But sometimes they don't. But I don't know. It's, we're kind of looking good with the Rams here too, man. But uh, excited about that. But that's right. coming up, man. It's summer. It's like August is preseason. It's hard hard to believe. It's already around the corner, man. And that's when I'll be really happy. <laughs> Football, right? We are like very fan also too, like baseball. You know, we love um, baseball. A lot of the like, Panamanian figures have been playing the Yankees, and, yeah. and that's why we love um, baseball too. Um, a lot of my uh, Family relatives are very like um, fans of the uh, Braves, okay. you know, and Boston. So um, we love that. We love uh, baseball. I just went with my brother to uh, Tampa Bay Rays oh, um, game yeah. with the Yan- Yankees in Tampa, the Tropicana. Yep. And it was it was awesome. So we I love th- love baseball. I think Ger- Derek Jeter might have bought them, or I know he bought into one of the. Yeah, I think. Uh, the old Yankee guy, he was like head of a, you know, um, a group that bought, I think, the Tampa Bay Rays maybe, or hey, I think it's them. But uh, and a lot of people weren't real happy with him. He's a great ball player. I don't know about a great owner, but, right. you know, they, they're trying to get that stadium filled. But I, I would just love it out there in Tampa Bay. It's kind of a beautiful place. And, you know, it get is out beautiful. there on a sunny day. Just and, so much water. Yeah, give me a hot dog and a but, big, tall beer, and I'm there, exactly. baby. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're in California, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. California is beautiful too. It's, yeah. it's just beautiful. It's just as beautiful, maybe more beautiful than uh, here in Florida. It just depends where you are. Yeah, in the we state. got we got that smog that rolls in about from three o'clock on from L.A. down to us in Orange County. But other than the smog and some wicked taxes and stuff, it's a pretty nice place. But uh, <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, yeah, there could be a lot worse places to live, that's for sure. Quite expensive and stuff, so I'm very blessed oh, to yeah. be able to live here and be part of this whole place. It's just uh it's so hard for younger people to move in here unless you got a super kick ass job. Cost of living. That's I mean, what I yeah, heard. It's like a house is like six, seven hundred grand for the medium, oh, you know, God. two thousand square foot home with on a four thousand square foot lot, and it's like seven hundred fifty grand. It's like who can afford that starting off? I mean, I think you need to make a hundred and fifty plus grand to even qualify for the minimum, you know, house. For and, sure. You know, for kids, sure. Or or. Our people, like uh, young dentists, for example, we I, I consider myself young too. Yeah. Um, uh, so we end up uh, finishing dental school with just so much debt, so that oh, we cannot even like you know think about like buying a house oh, right tough. from the get go. It's just very hard. Buying a house or even very getting hard. in your own practice, I mean, you have to be an associate more so than not, and you know with that overhead and. Um, I mean, right. with the cost of what you have in your education and all that, it's tough. And um, it's even, too, it, it eliminates a lot of doctors from trying my lab because I'm not the cheapest lab and I'm not really expensive. But yet for a doctor, you know, that's on an extreme budget, he's going to look everywhere he can to, you know, to cut costs. And a lot of times yeah. it comes at a lab's sake and, um, you know, but it's just something um, I feel for him and. I've been doing this a long time and I've seen it a lot. And ever since I've been doing this podcast, it's been about four years now. I just, I've learned so much more about dentists. I'm a dental geek, but I'm a dental lab geek. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I know I teeth bet. and stuff. But it, the dentist, what they have to go through to be successful, it's tough. And once you get it down, though, it, it can be a very, very rewarding job. But there's a lot of moving parts and, you know, um, it's just, it, it can be tough, but um, it can be very, very lucrative and a very rewarding job, but it takes it takes a lot out of a dentist. You know, you got to be part psychologist, part coach, part, you know, superstar. You got you got a lot of hats to wear and to make it all work. Exactly. And, but, um, a lot of hats. Yeah. You got it. And then um, the fact that you're being like um, talking to a lot of dentists during those uh, four years like you said, you learn so much that what we have to like, uh, you know, do exactly. uh, to be able to make a successful life. Um, a lot of that has to do with patient. We have to know the patient that we have, that we see, but our own patient, we have to be patient. We have yeah. to take it a little bit slow, you know, yeah. uh, not slow, but how can I say it? Like, um, you have to be patient because um, in the beginning, you cannot just get everything, uh, especially when you go through like residency. You already spend your um, regular years in dental school. There are four or five years, and then you have you owe all this money, you know, yeah. and then you go to a residence another three more years. That's a lot of, you know, dental schooling. Yes, it is. So, yes, you're going to end up with a lot of that, but you're anxious about getting out there and start like owning your practice and then working and um, making a living all that and then um you kind of hit a wall okay yeah, you kind of hit a wall and you're like okay i think i have to like just take it easy mm -hmm. uh work learn all their stuff that never were taught in dental school uh like practice management that's very important the marketing oh, yeah. all that absolutely is very important so um we have to be patient and then we we have to learn other stuff that we we weren't taught in dental school. So that will be, you know, something that is good to discuss oh, with the young generation. Yeah. I can imagine like I'm such a freaking bull in a China shop and I don't really have patience and stuff. But for imagine me trying to be a dentist with no patience, those guys wouldn't be successful if, unless you're kind of calm and can listen and, I remember I was just looking at my report cards from like second grade, first grade, and right. all the way through the years. And almost all the comments always says, needs to practice self-control, <laughs> oh, needs to listen. That's why I'm not a dentist, buddy. But all right. Hey, dude, let's let me go ahead. Let's dental up here. So tell me, doctor, why okay. did you get into dentistry? And at what point did you think I want to be a dentist? That's a good, interesting question. I guess everybody gets that question. And I would say that probably more than half of um, uh, the people, they say either they wear, uh, wearing braces 
uh, and they, they go into dentistry or their pa uh, daddy or mommy was a dentist or mm -hmm. our dentist, and they just continue that path. So those are probably like, most of the frequent, you know, responses that I'm sure you, you, you got. But I'm, I'm in one of those. So when I was um, probably 16 years old, teenager, I didn't have my canines. My canines were impacted in the roof of my mouth, in oh. the palate. So, and then I have the spaces, but they never came out. So I always was smiling and then didn't have canines. So I was like, okay, mom, well, what's going on with me? And then she took me to the dentist, and then they took a panoramic, and they did see that I don't have canines, but they were all impacted. So they took me to the oral surgeon, you know, and then they say, let's take them out, and then throw it away. I was like, no, I don't want that. So at that early age, I kind of knew that canines were very important to me. So I didn't want that option. So I went for a second opinion, and then they, you know, the orthodontist, they want to, like, track them down, put them in their place, and that's what happened. So I ended up wearing, wearing six years, my no braces, kidding. with all three surgeries in my mouth. And then I was every six weeks, I was in the dentist since I was 17 years old. So by that time, I was getting, you know, leaving high school. So you need to make a decision what you want to, you know, pursue. So I was like, okay, I love dentistry because I've been there for the, you know, the last uh, two years at that time. And then that's how I ended up, you know, going into dentistry. Applied <laughs> dental school, got accepted. That's awesome. None of my parents are dentists. None <laughs> of them are, med, uh, you know, in the medical field. So I went there, and they love it. No kidding. That's a great. Never heard yeah. that story, dude. I mean, didn't have your canines or impacted. And uh, nope. how are they now? Did they come into place? <laughs> are they in the Beautiful. Room? Ah, beautiful. See? You haven't seen my smile on my oh, Instagram yeah, poses and photos, see. and like oh, those are dude. those are real. They're not fake. There's yeah. no fake. There's no like you look like, There's no imp. You got a beautiful smile. You look like Kelly Ripa's husband, uh, Costano. That guy. Yeah, that's a great smile. Shit, my I had a canine, same thing. I was a young kid and a number 11, uh -huh. but it was up facially. It wasn't palately, but it was up probably 10 millimeters above up my Gosh. up in the top of my gum line where it's coming out like a big fang tooth, but up inside my lip. And for all those, I used to get in fights and I get popped in the mouth and I'd be bleeding everywhere. And it would always be because that tooth was cutting my lips. And so my brother was going to USC dental school and he's like, come on in, Sean, I'll just pull it. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. And I, we didn't know any better. And uh, there was a big gap and he said, it'll close up. And sure enough, it did. So my number 12 is Perfect. like moved forward. So it's like my canine, but, uh, Man, that was a they they call it an eye tooth for a reason. When they pulled that thing out, I can almost right. feel it in my sinus. Even when I blow my nose hard, sometimes on that left side, it's weird how long it's just it's a long mm -hmm. root. And I actually had that tooth going to dental technology school, and I made an impression right. of it, and I cast it. And uh, now yeah. recently, I just got that old casting. It was like a gin gold, kind of a bronze. I cast it out of like uh, 14 karat gold, and I put a little ring around it, and I wear it around my neck, man. Here you. Yeah, it's a killer tooth, man. I would love to see that. You need <laughs> yeah. to like take a photo of that yeah. and then uh, Instagram it or uh, yeah. Snapchat it or something like that. I got to get be that great. out. It, I should. That's funny. Never told That's nobody amazing. that. That's a trip. But uh, with you and your canines, man, brought it out of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there you go. So cool. And that's how I ended up in dentistry. I don't know why you didn't go to dentistry with yeah. all that story behind. Because uh, I'm a dumbass and my brother did. And I went to dental technology yeah. school because I wasn't real good with the books. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Especially now with the studying all that. Um, you know, the, the, that's good. That's good business yeah. too. You know, and you're helping people too because you're making like beautiful um art. Yeah, Piece of art that actually, yeah. That's what I, we I are. We're a bunch very, of very, very good. We're a bunch of artists, man. Uh, and that's why we mm -hmm. called it Keating Dental Arts and got a couple of million teeth up in people's mouths through these last 36 wow, years. So million? it's pretty good, man. I'm pretty excited. And uh, I love the field. It's just, it's so neat and rewarding. And even too, with it all, a lot of it going digital now and, God, it was right. so hard to learn how to it. wax and cast and all that stuff. And nowadays, you can go on a computer screen and pick out a different library of teeth and put them in the mouth. And, oh, it's just so neat and rewarding. But you still need to be a great ceramist at the end of it and to be able to grind in and make sure everything's proper and Murden's profiles and, you know, sluice ways and, right. you know, oblique ridges. And you got to make sure you get all that stuff in there. But it's a, it's a neat thing. It's it's much more predictable nowadays, and and especially too with the breakage. Uh, 
I still do a lot of PFMs, and we still have you know a little hiccup right. here and there. But um, with the the monolithic fools are conians, man. That stuff right. is like we they got the hammer test. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a, it's a really great product, especially now with the aesthetics getting better and better. But um, oh man, that's so cool. But all right, so tell me a little bit about when you got out of college and stuff. Um, did you start out as an associate, or did you purchase a practice? Tell me a little bit about that, if you could. So, um, yes, you know what I was like sharing before, you go through like so many years of dental school that you get uh, not just too much in depth, but also you get anxious about like, okay, I've been too long in dental school. I need to own something. I need to like have my own um, um, practice. I almost bought a practice in Chicago because I finished in Chicago my residency mm-hmm. and my master. I almost bought a practice in Chicago. And then um, after that didn't work out. Um, I almost bought a practice here in uh, Miami Beach. Also, um, well, the dentist decided not to sell. So that's why I didn't. And then I had to, like, you know, as a last resource, I had to, like, look for jobs just like anybody else's. And then um, I, I'm a, an associate now, and, and I'm not regretted. Mm-hmm. I great decision not to buy right out of a dental school unless you have a big cushion. You have daddy, mommy, yeah, or exactly. I don't know, inheritance or something like that. Yeah, but right now I'm very like, um, you know, focusing on what I like to do. And then a great practice um, that put a lot of, um, uh, how you call that, stressed the fact that you need to be good at practice management. Something like, like I said before, we're not trained on that. And exactly. that's a whole different world. So I'm learning a lot about that while focusing on what I really, really love, which is implant dentistry. Um, so where I am is, is, is a perfect, um, I would say, very perfect marriage um, in between like uh, my bosses and, and, and me. So um, associate, very good. You always have to look for good mentor, yeah. good uh, ethics. And then you can learn a lot from that. No kidding. What about uh, Benita right. Springs? Do you know of uh, Dr. Fred Eck out there? Fred Eck. Fred, it sounds familiar. Yeah. I belong to, to a study club in this area. So um, I think that I know him. It's just uh, the, 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 the picture of his face doesn't pop into my head right now. Yeah. Um, but he's, I he's know several guy. dentists already. Yeah, I, I used to do work with him back in, I think he was in Benita Springs. I can't remember, but uh, he's a big time guy. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, Real great practice, man. They got a lot of good quality dentists out there in that area for sure. So a lot of patients, man. Do you doing a lot of like overdenture stuff with uh, locators or you got an older uh, demographic with patients? What are you seeing mostly with right, your patients? Right, that's what happened. That's what happened. Uh, before I was here, I was working with a friend who is a Panamanian too in the east coast of Florida, which is um, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And then over there, the you know the population is young, you know, young people, you know, workers, all that stuff. So on this side, is yes, more older, you know, population, which is good because they need a lot of um, healthcare. Um, so a lot of people from up north here, we uh, they call it seasonal, and it is right now. We're in the summer; it's the low season. Everybody who or like 40% of the population in this area just went up north, okay. either Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, New York, New Jersey. They're all up back there right now. So it's a little slow now. But, yeah, all these people need so much work, um, bridge work that it was done 20 years ago, uh, 30 years ago. We had to remake and all the ones uh, need to be, you know, distracted. And then they love the implant technology now. So we're doing a lot of um, overdenture, but um, I would say they probably half going to overdentures. The other half, yeah, fix complete, you know, all on four, all on six, all on five. That's what we do um, on this side. Um, a lot of implant industry here, for yeah, sure. Kidding. What about with you and your implants? What What do you like? Any like the Stramans, like Noble Bikers? What are you using mostly? Well, Listen, when I was in the university, we use what the university uses. And usually the university had deals with these companies. So yeah. I was in the University of Nova when we use a lot of uh, Nobel and uh, 3i. Um, uh, not Stroma, actually. Uh, but when I went to Chicago, we use a lot of Astra and a lot of uh, Strauma um, and also some Nobel, you know. But Back to private practice, if the office is already established with one company, that's what we use. 
So in this case, I'm using BioHorizon. Okay. So if you see, I've been working with many different uh, companies, and then I see how they differ, you know, differ in the connection, the threads, and then how you the, inter, the implant protocol for, or drilling protocol works. So that's very rewarding to know a lot about that because we get so many patients that have like crowns that broke on implants and then they're like this type of company. And I say, yes, I work with those ones. Awesome. Okay, so I can help you with that. Or they, they broke another one and it's a different company or Zimmer or anything like that. So I know I work with so many companies that, you know, that's very helpful for patients. They don't have to be, you know, we're, we're not going to be guessing. You know what I'm saying? That's We're so not going to awesome. be guessing that much. And for you to be at such a young age, but you've had so many years already in the trenches with implants and stuff like that, it's great that you have that knowledge already. Can you imagine another 10 years in the trenches? You're going to just be even that much smarter and that much. A lot of guys kind of shy away. They don't mind restoring the implants, but they don't like sinking them and right. stuff like that. And I could see that. I mean, myself, I, I just. Oh, I just, I don't know how you guys do it with all the blood and everything else, man. I, I watch some of those videos on Facebook or whatever. I'm like, whoa. It just well, so you blows have me to away. Like, <laughs> you have to like that. So my story about being prostodontist is a little bit funny because all my life since I was in Panama, I wanted to be oral surgeon, okay. as a matter of fact. You know, because um, I love the surgery a lot, the blood, the feel, all that. So um, I did an internship in Panama, actually, a whole year in, uh, in, uh, in the hospital. Okay. It was oral surgery. So when I went to, when I came to the United States, I got accepted in Puerto Rico. So I did an internship in Puerto Rico, yeah. in, you know, oral surgery. I so was, I was, I was doing, born there, baby. You know, <laughs> I was born a there. You go. Yeah. There you go. Viva la so San I was Juan. in the uh, medical okay. center, San Juan. Uh, how you call that? Centro Medico <laughs> in Spanish. Um, so I was there for like uh, 2009, and that was a great experience from trauma to implants. Yeah, so good. if you see, I was very passionate about surgery. So when I went to Nova. I did some big cases in cosmetic veneers and uh, tabletop veneers. You know, at that time, nobody was doing that. So they asked me if I could wax on my cases, and I did wax on my cases. And then I proved them that I could do big cases in the pre-doc clinic. Awesome. So as international dentist, they allowed me to do that, and I did it. And everything was, like, very well. Different cases on implant dentistry, all the restorative part, all the NOVA. And they say, Randall, if you go to oral surgery, I think you're going to waste your skills. I think that you need to go into prosthodontics. Um, and then that keep me going, like thinking about it towards my last year, which I had to like, start like, you know, applying. And that's what I, you know, I look for. Okay, so let's listen to the people there. Um, they're in the field already, prosthodontists, uh, my mentors. And I investigated and Chicago actually give you a training on um, prosthodontics and also an implant dentistry. So I was like, okay, I think that's uh, the best way Perfect. to like get both the best of both worlds. And that's what happened. I ended up in that program, and we train in, in you know full arches. Everything is done by us in the university, and I learned that. So I like that. Wow, that's so awesome. Now, what a great, great education there, man. Uh, I, my brother, too, went with was in the Navy, and after eight years of all this college, and he went and did a two-year residency for endodontics, and uh, it's just uh -huh. neat to have all that and in your under your belt and then to get out and start like that. You're way ahead of the game the way I look at it. So what are you thinking? You think you'll put some dues in with this uh, program, this practice, and uh, maybe start your own in the future or – just going to play it by ear, pay off some bills, and just uh, maybe think about it maybe five years down the line? Exactly. I think I'm going to just wait. I'm learning so much other stuff that I haven't trained, like practice management, marketing, all that. So um, hopefully we can get some um, work together with my bosses, and then maybe we can put something else, you know, in between the two of us. Yeah. That would be great. I would um, love it. Love to yeah. show you what we could do for sure. and. Help out, and any if you have any certain patients that are kind of down on their luck too, maybe we can help them do some charity cases, whatever, man. I, I love making teeth, and once a doctor tries us out, they they get really uh, 
to get really into our lab, and it's just kind of neat because you're only as good as your lab. At the end of the day, you can have great preps and all this other great impressions, but if you don't have a great lab to make you look good, baby, you're just going to look average. And right. Average crowns, you're not talking about average crowns. The doctors love it when patients are just raving about their restorations, and it's just uh, it's important, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of a neat thing when you really do get dialed in with a great lab. But um, now that's so awesome. Dude, what about are you guys into any of the scanners or CAD cam dentistry? Are you going doing any of that at your practice? So that's a good you know question because um, now we have um, um, digital dentistry and we would love to to you know to do that. In this practice, has been uh, without the digital uh, world except for the CT scan for okay. our implant. But we haven't like embraced yet the um, in-home uh, milling or even the scan. But that's the plan for next year yeah. to have a digital scan. Um, you'll so love it. You get into those scanners and you'll be like, what? Emperor gum? No more. Polyvinyl? No. You know, it, it's a neat thing. And uh, just to be able to wave a wand in the mouth and it's just so freaking accurate and it just gets instantly sent to the lab and, you know, they're working on it. You're getting back in a day or two, you know, it's just, it's just unbelievable. But um, yeah, digital, we'll, we'll get the digital here in our office. So everybody is like trying to get um, digital, just like start slow, get the, the you know, the digital, the, the scanner first. You don't have to get the milli unit exactly. and you get started with that. Okay. So that will be, you know, a great to start without investing that much. And you are right there in the digital world already. Oh, yeah. Well, look at the three shape. If you do look at it, the three shape yeah. trios or the Itero, you know, um, care has got one, Medit's got one, um, a few others, but we, we really like the Sirona has yeah. one. Yeah. Sirona's got one too, but, um, yeah. It, just check them all out, but uh, I think uh, we see a lot, and um, I just think uh, I'm a big fan of that three shape, man. That's for sure. But uh, you know, I'm just the like, lab. They, but... <laughs> they're coming with a three or four. I think you're going to get more and more of these coming out, and just making it user friendly, and hopefully they drop the prices down even more. I mean, because um, that's dentists are pretty frugal guys, and I know that you know a lot of them don't go to the three shape trios because it's the most expensive, but. At the end of the day, sure. you get what you pay for, and I just think, um, I don't know, it's just something uh, we see a lot. We see more in about a, a month than most doctors will see in a 30-year career, so we see a lot, and we're just not in. I don't get any money from any of these guys. I just, they all kind of work. It's kind of like, you know, you can have a Ferrari or a Lambo, and they're all kind of neat, right. but you've got certain guys like Ferraris, and certain people like the Lambo. They, they both do the job, but it's just same thing with the scanners, but it um, comes with costs and everything else to make your choices, but pretty neat thing but um what about on some of your uh education i hear you're talking about yeah what do you want to uh, look for in and future education uh, like practice management any any implant courses what do you got on the horizon you're thinking about attending it's more about surgery i like i like love surgery so i'll all, always like to fine tune my surgical skills especially in the aesthetic zone um i have this uh, i have this um course that I'm going next week to Panama okay. teaching about um, implants in the aesthetic zone um, but still there's um, you know people that come with big massive defects and I love to work with oral surgeon and periodontists and they, they you know they get together and then they just um, uh, work with the patient and then they make it better okay but I always like to like hands-on and then do that so there is like um uh, a course is called like um, get your GBR on. So that's more what I'm probably gonna be doing next year. Um, so in terms of like surgery, but in this side of Florida, and I think you're gonna see more in um, other areas. There's a lot of concern about erosion. There's a lot of people with erosion and wear. Uh, I don't know because of the stress, part of it because of the diet. You know, but there's a lot of wear. And then we all used to like do a lot of crowns and we still do a lot of crowns. But in this type of patient, you cannot just make crowns on people. They already lost a lot of like, you know, enamel. Yeah. So I just went to France to get trained on additive tra dentistry. This is a, a different, you know, thing now that um, without cutting, you know, the tooth or anything like that, we can add what is missing and then restore the patient, um, you know, in a different way. No so kidding. I love that approach, a little bit more conservative, 
even though I'm a prosthodontist and then we can be at times a little bit more aggressive. You know what I'm saying? We like our, our crowns to last a long time and then don't, we don't like to just, um, re, uh, you know, rely on bonding, but actually the bonding, um, came, came a long way, has come a oh, long absolutely. way. So it's much, much better now. So we have more alternative for our patients, especially for the youngster. They have a lot of severity, um, you know, erosion and wear. We, we have another option. So that's additive dentistry. You just got trained um, a couple of 10 days ago in France. So that was good. Ah, that's so good awesome. experience. Over in France. I mean, it's just so neat. Oh, I, I'm too scared to crow across that pond, man. I can't, I can't handle that plane more than five or six hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was like long travel, <laughs> but worth it. Totally worth it. We went to Geneva. I saw the most expensive watch ever, $80,000 for one watch. <laughs> and they're not even Rolex. It's just a different thing. Oh, yeah, and then um, we went to the front side and then France, uh, French side. Oh. And then that's where I got trained. Unbelievable. So, oh, it, very man. interesting. Beautiful. <laughs> that's so cool. So what, what procedures don't you like doing? What do you, what do you outsource and say, I'm not touching it anything? Thing, or you pretty much will take anything and and kind of roll with it. What do you like to do? What don't you like to do? Good question. I just don't like to do endos. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just don't like to do endos. I don't like to do much of fillings. You know, direct uh, restorations. Okay. Um, but you know, once in a while we get those, and so I take care of them. Um, but in those, uh, no, I have I have good relationship with our endodontist here. So, and we actually have one endodontist that comes to the office once a week, and then we have our own, um, not own, just a good, you know, endodontist that also works outside. So we have that cover for sure. So That's I don't so like cool. to do those ones. That's mm -hmm. awesome, man! You got it all rolling, dude. So let's wrap this up and tell me. What advice can you give some of our newer dentists just starting out? Even though that, dude, what did you? You graduated, I think, 2014 totally, but you're young, but no, you've really 17. got a, Oh, 2017. 17. <laughs> so. 17, I finished my residency, so I only have like, yeah, couple what, two years. years out? Ah, that's so awesome, yeah. dude. Well, give us give us some of our younger guys and some of the people probably five, ten years in, you could probably give some advice. So give us some advice out there. Yeah, for totally. Someone. You have to be eager. You have to be eager to learn because dentistry, especially with this new uh, digital dentistry, is changing, is evolving. Now there is different way to do things, even to place implant. There's robotic, you know, uh, you know, implant placement now, robotic coming into uh, dentistry. So um, you need to be eager to learn because um, now it's easier. There's so much courses out there that you can take and then hands on and then you can um, learn more and get more of your skill, you know, develop. So that's very good. So be eager to learn stuff that you don't know. Don't be uh, impatient. So you have to be patient. Don't think that unless you have a great deal and a great cushion that you need to buy a practice in the first year uh, of, uh, you know, being out, you know, out of school. So you have to be patient. You have to learn. Um, that part of the business of dentistry that you don't know, that you never be taught, you know, in dental school. And that's where I'm learning. So that's very important. Okay. You can be the most skilled clinician out there. If you don't know how to manage your office, uh, you're just not going to make it. You know, you're just not going to make it. You're just going to quit. You're going to get frustrated. You're just going to be an associate after owning a practice for a few years and you know that you have to close down and sell it. So that's my advice. Just Good be advice. patient, be eager to learn, and then you'll make it for that's sure. I haven't awesome. heard any dentist that, um, you know, at least that I know of, that they couldn't make it, you know, in life. You know, you have to be doing wrong decision, very bad wrong decision to not make it. Dentistry is, I think, that the best job, you know, that we have in uh, today's world. Uh, it's just beautiful. It's I love, beautiful. love hearing that. Love that enthusiasm and Good job. Dr. Brins, thank you so much for coming on the Dental Up podcast. Uh, God bless you and your family, man. And just thanks again for coming on board, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Talk uh, to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up podcast show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers.
Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.